Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 9. In this tutorial we're going to create the ability to generate a random question in our script. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we need to head into our question generate script. And if you remember this one from a couple of tutorials ago, or if you're watching the uh, full series video uh, about an hour ago, uh, we had this created and we kind of set it up ready for when we want to generate uh, new questions. So this is going to be a pretty long script, uh, but it's mainly just kind of repeating itself over and over, but with different questions and answers. The way you can think of this is this is ultimately going to be a bit of a library with questions. Now, the more questions you have, the longer this script will be. So I want to create a couple in this tutorial and then give you basic instructions how you would be able to go even further developing much more questions. So a good quiz app would end up having thousands of questions. If you've got the patience for that, that's brilliant. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a random number that will dictate which uh, actual question we are going to display. So, firstly, we need to give ourselves a actual variable that's going to contain that random number. And we'll end up with a line of code which will say, this is going to generate this random number, and we'll be able to pick from one of however many questions. So, we're going to create, let's say, four random questions in this tutorial. Obviously, like I say, if you want to create more, you can. So, we're going to have public int, short for integer, because this is just going to be a whole number, and we're going to have this as question number, semicolon. So we need to place it in the correct position of our script, and we're going to end up nesting a couple of uh, functions here. So we're going to nest this if statement inside another if statement, which is going to contain this question right here. So inside the if displaying question is false, we now need to say question number equals random dot range. And in brackets, we need to put the minimum and maximum numbers. So as I said, we're going to generate four different questions. So the minimum is always going to be one in this case, comma, and then the maximum. So the maximum could be thousands, it could be hundreds, but what you should always do is put the maximum one above whatever you want it to be. So for example, we're going to generate four, but the maximum should always be five. What that means is it will generate up to that maximum, but it won't generate the maximum. So it will either do one, two, three, or four. So it's always a good idea to put it one above whatever the maximum would be simply because it's just one of those little quirks of programming this way. So let's close bracket and semicolon. At this point, we've now generated a number randomly. And we can say that if the number is one, then let's have this woodchuck question. If it's two, let's have a question on Super Mario. So we can say if, and in brackets, question number equals one, close bracket, open curly bracket, and now we can actually use a cool little trick. We can delete that close bracket, go to where actual answer A is, hit return, and then place the close bracket there, and it will automatically indent your code as needed. And you can see how this is now uh, functioning. You can see it going all the way through, and it's nesting these if statements so as it recognizes what it's doing. So what's happening here is we're saying, yep, yeah, it's false. We're generating a number. If it's one, then display this. If it's two, display something else. So let's copy this line of code here. Let's place it below. And we also need to take the if statement as well. I should have copied that in the first place. So we're saying if question number is equal to two, then we also have to say displaying question is true because each and every time we have to make sure that we do display it. Uh, so let's see uh, what this can be. Who is the 
brother of Luigi. And D can be Link. Uh, C can be Mario. Mario, as I put there. Um, this can be DK. And let's have B as Toad. So what we're saying here is that the answer is actually C. Now, we go further down, and this is where each individual question can occur naturally. So I'm going to put a bit of space in there so as I can see. And let's take question number two, and let's duplicate it. And now all you need to do is put your questions and answers in each section here. Like I said, you can think of this in short terms as like a bit of a library where all the questions are going to be. Um, let's say, I'm not sure... <laughs> Where is Japan? Uh, we've got Africa. Uh, let's have let's have B as the correct answer on this one. So Asia. Um, let's have Europe, and let's have Antarctica. So the correct answer there is B. And let's do one more. As I said, we'll do four in here. And obviously, if you want to go further, you absolutely can. I don't think you're going to be restricted. Your only restriction is your own knowledge, I guess. Um, let's have... How old is the world? Um, what haven't we had? We haven't had D as the answer. We'll have D as the answer. Uh, let's have... Billions of years, um, 10 years, let's have six months. Obviously, these are just stupid answers, but you, you, get, the, you get the idea. Um, 1,400 years. So, obviously, the answer is D. And now let's save. So this script is going to generate a random question and it is going to feed it into our question display whenever we start. So our question display will display on screen whatever random number we have generated. So let's head back into Unity and just let the script compile. And if we go on Master Control, you can see that nothing has really changed at all apart from this question number. So this is a visual indication of which question we have generated. So let's give this a go. Let's press play. Where is Japan? Perfect. It's in Asia. Awesome. And let's try that again. Who is the brother of Luigi? Let's say Link, because we got it wrong. In fact, no, let's say DK. We've got it wrong. So let's try and get a duplicate question so we can see if we do get the right answer. There we go. So. Perfect. So if you follow me to the T with all the scripts, everything should function as normal now. So the buttons know what the answer is going to be. And obviously we're generating the same question over and over because there's only four possibilities. You've got a one in four chance right now. But the idea is that a random question will generate. Uh, Ten years old. Wrong. So hopefully if you guys have gone further and you've got lots and lots and lots of questions, you can now see that this really is generating a random question every single time. Cool. As I said, there's no real limit you could go to with this. If you want to add more, all you would need to do is go into your question generate, add one to your maximum, and then scroll down and just place your question. So we could say five now. Uh, what, where, if I can spell, <laughs> where does Jimmy love? Is it A, Vegas, obviously. Is it B, uh, Tokyo. Is it C, London. Or is it D, I'll just put Rio. And obviously the answer is going to be A. I mean, I suppose trick question really. I, I think I do love them all. But that's beside the point. Um, so A would be the answer. 
head back into Unity, and that's all it really is. It's set up and ready to go for that question to be fed into. Let's see if we can actually get it to generate real quick. There we go. So we've got it. Vegas. Awesome. So that is pretty much how the app is going to work from here. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to create a score system as well as creating the sequence, which allows us to move on to the next question. Remember when we did coroutines earlier in the series, or if you're watching the full series earlier in the video, then we will have done a little bit of coroutine. So we're going to be dealing with more with that to create a sequence. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.